Hey, hey, what's up? Hey, how are you? Right. I'm good, I'm good. Can you hear me fine? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Thanks for uh, wanting to do this. Of course, yeah. Sorry it took a bit to 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 get this all set up and stuff. I just had a really busy couple of months. <laughs> oh, no, it's no problem. So I could, I could just uh, jump around then with your career so far? Sure. So I know in, term, in terms of anime, it started with uh, doing background voices for a uh, dramatical murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that was the very first uh, job I got to do, which was really fun. Mm -hmm. And it was a uh, Chris Chris uh, Ayers who got you into that. Yes, it was the it was the late Chris Ayers who uh, he had seen me at a <clears throat> he had seen me at a theater audition and he thought I I guess did well enough that he decided to call me in. Uh, based off of that and uh yeah and are you i know it kind of varies uh with uh what people say but do you personally think that um theater experience is a must for doing dubbing i i don't think it's 100 percent necessary i know of i personally know people who who don't do theater at all and don't really have a theater background but i do think that it helps um i i think that a lot of the technical side of things that you learn from doing theater like articulation and just voice control it can help a lot in voiceover but that's not to say you can't learn that stuff on your own if you are uh specifically focusing on voiceover as well there are different ways to go about it but i think that theater definitely helps a lot um as well and mm -hmm. then also just the performing as an actor before just the voice side of things um can be helped by having stage experience as well but that is, again i i think that uh you can get those experiences from other methods as well theater just tends to be the most common because i think it's one of the easiest to get into from pretty much wherever you're at the a majority of area a, a majority of towns and cities and stuff they have some sort of theater or maybe like your school or something they have some sort of theater so it's a very easy um, barrier to entry to uh, to get started with, I guess, is the best way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> and is there um, any aspiration for you to move to L.A.? To L.A.? Not in particular. Um, I've considered possibly moving to someplace like Dallas or something like that, but I, I think I've been doing pretty well for myself here in Houston in terms of uh, deciding to to move into different areas that's something that i'm still in the process of uh deciding and everything like that but yeah okay. mm -hmm. and was there ever any aspiration to uh try and pursue a uh, live action work um so the not so much on camera uh i i kind of get a little bit self-conscious on camera and so if i were to pursue any sort of live action uh acting it would have been in, in theater which is what i have my degree in because I, I do enjoy being on stage and, and performing in front of an audience as well i just think that a lot of the opportunities that have presented themselves to me to be able to do to, to be able to be an actor full-time just happen to fall into the voiceover category which is great for me because voice acting is something that i've wanted to do for as long as i've wanted to be an actor as well yeah. so it's it's just how the everything worked out yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know you you get this a lot i'm sure but you're you're a, a crazy singer. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Um, singing, singing is something that I enjoy doing mainly as like uh, as a hobby. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's something that I've always enjoyed. I was in choir my junior year of high school and senior year, and then I was in choir for like a year of junior college. Uh, but then they were being the the director at that junior college was a little bit like i guess jealous of the theater department for taking the, my time because i was a theater major and i was doing choir just because i enjoyed singing as well yeah um and i guess the the schedules didn't mesh well enough for the for the choir director's liking that i was like you know what i'm just gonna go focus on my theater stuff then uh <laughs> but um yeah and 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 i enjoyed for a long time doing like vocal covers of, of songs that I enjoy on YouTube and everything like that. But, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I would think that the really the only anime you've gotten to sing for is an actor song connection. Officially. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that's, that's the first time I've gotten to do an anime where, um, not only was it like kind of a musical show in general that, that I was involved in, but one where they actually dubbed the songs. Cause I feel like, a lot of shows um 
even if the show is about music and musicians and singers and stuff, it, it feels like a majority of dubs tend to just leave the insert songs uh, in the original Japanese right. and then just cut back to English when they start speaking again. So that was a lot of fun to be able to work on a show where it was kind of like a musical and we also actually got to sing the songs, which was which was great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So going back to the uh, timeline, I guess, what your first actual character being a ha uh, ha Hamatora? Yeah, so he was my very first named character. I play Hikaru in uh, Ari Hamatora, which is the yeah. second season of Hamatora. And uh, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. I was super excited. I think that was about maybe six months into my first year of voice acting there. Because um, I had, like I, like you mentioned, I had only done like extra voices in Dramatical Murder before then. I think I did some extra voices in Chaika Coffin Princess before then. Uh, and then a few things here and there. I think I was in Utawareru Mono, the false faces yep. before that. It, it was one of those earlier ones. Um, and, and I can't remember exactly where Hamatori felt, Hamatora fell in the timeline. I just remember it being uh, within within like the first half year of me doing it professionally and stuff, which was, it was super exciting for me whenever I first saw it. I was like, oh, I'm a character that they focus on for a whole episode. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess then would uh, would first bigger character be in a uh, supernatural battles become commonplace? Um, I would say he that that character uh, Akutagawa. He was uh, I'd say honestly he he was kind of more of like a side character for those episodes as well because he was only really in one or two episodes and he just kind of had the comments here and there. I think Hikaru was probably uh, a little bit of a larger character in that he was just like a main focus for the episode. Um, I would say that my first major plot centric character would have to be uh gel sadra from uh gotchaman crowds insight yep. he was the, the the young little red tomato kid who uh he's a little alien and then he grows up to be an adult played by chris Patton. um and i think i think that was one of the first times where it was like a multi-episode character that was pretty like central to the main plot of the season um and that was exciting as well and then my very first uh, lead role ended up being uh, Belle from from Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon, which I'm sure you'll <laughs> be asking about at some point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, in terms of darker characters, like darker, more central characters, I would think a uh, Ko Mukami would be the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was definitely one of the first more like uh, edgier characters or something. Because uh, I remember when I worked on the show, uh, I, and I found, when I first announced the show, I remember seeing some fans respond to it and be like, oh, you played the nice one! And I'm like, he's he's still not very nice. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, no, that one was a lot of fun. Um, that one was interesting because I recorded Ko and Bell around the same time. I can't remember which one I recorded first before the other, but I remember they released around the same time as well. That's why I remember them being recorded with somewhat within the same general time frame uh mm -hmm. which was funny because ko is like one of my edgier characters and then you got bell who's just such a good boy yeah uh, which was fun <laughs> well and speaking of um your main characters that you've had such a long time to uh do so much with like bell Seiya, kinata and takumi who do you think that you personally relate the most to um i think I think in terms of like how they are as a character, I probably relate most to to Bell, just because he is he he's the kind of person that just tries to be polite to people as much as he can, unless they give him a reason to like not vibe with them for whatever reason. He I, I tend to try and be very friendly and, and uh easy to talk to and, and uh low maintenance is what I like to say. Uh because I, I'm I just try to be friendly to people like that. Um, but then he also has got the side to him where it's like, well, don't, don't step on the people that matter to me. Like, cause then I'll defend them kind of thing. That's, that's the kind of person I try to be. Um, so I, I think Bell is probably the one that I relate to the most personally. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And do you think you have a personal preference for working on, um, lighter shows over dramatic or do you dislike anything? Um, I, well, I, I, I like to work on pretty much anything that they'll have me in for, honestly. Um, but I, I do really enjoy getting to play the more dramatic side of things. There's a lot of uh, really dramatic moments in, uh, like, Darling the Franks or, yeah. or, or Season 3 of Damachi. There was a, some really great dramatic moments in that. Um, and uh, uh, Attack on Titan has been great to work on. That's a lot of drama and, yeah. and, and stuff. Like that. I, I love working on that kind of, like, that meaty 
like get you in the feels types of moments um but then then it's also really fun to to work on a fun show just like a goofy goofball like hinata like a lot of haiku it's it's action and 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 playing the games uh the the volleyball games uh but a lot of those in between moments where they're just boys being goofballs in high school yeah uh, is a lot of fun to be able to record as well so mm -hmm. yeah well and then of course you know something crazy like monster monster musume uh, yeah <laughs> monster musume yeah <laughs> that one was uh that one was a little bit tough to get started as well because i remember auditioning for him and whenever they wanted the, it was between me and some other person i don't know who who the other person was but they had notes for uh the other per I, I think the the note was for me to like try and make him sound a little bit older and more mature because he was still like 15 but they drew him to look a little bit more mature in terms of just how he presents himself um and so the note for me was to like try and age him down a little bit uh make him a little bit more mature and that was another one of my early leads as well i think i did i think i had only done bell before him and then i got him like right after like a half a year later um and so I was still getting used to keeping him in that more mature lower area um and and by the time the by the time the show ended i was able to more consistently keep it down here um and, uh, but it was it was really rough those first couple of sessions where i was like having to like actively think to myself like i need to keep him down here um but then also in terms of the the crazy uh shenanigans that happens in that show <laughs> uh where he's 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 down here and he's very serious and quiet and then on the the flip of a coin he he likes this freaking out and screaming and stuff and so those were really interesting sessions to be sure mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's related to that what do you think the cases where you've had to alter your voice the most significantly so far um altering my voice the most significantly it was it would either have to be monster musume just because um of when that when I recorded that I, my voice also naturally sounded a bit younger back when I recorded that as well. Um, some people had noted that like between season one and season two of say Don Machi that my voice sounds a little bit older in season two onward, um, and that's just my natural vocal development and stuff. And uh, uh, Kimi Hito I think fell right in that pocket before my voice had really changed that much uh, from from Bell uh, season one Bell. And so it was it was even tougher i think to to get him down there um when my voice was at that state uh and then another time that i think well, well actually here's another great example of something that's even even further down and gruffer was uh yamza in uh reincarnated slime um he's one of the the big gruff villains of season two he's only there for a couple of episodes but he's very much like in this very serious dark place all the time and uh I, it's one of those that i'd have to like drink tea and warm up for before going in and doing it because because i don't i don't get to play characters like that very often mm -hmm. um so that's why I, I i was really thankful to cliff for like seeing me in that role and everything and and uh making it work because it was a lot of fun to work on that role um but it was definitely like a technical stretch vocally to to be able to play something i wasn't used to yet um, mm -hmm. yeah well, it is. Uh, it, it's also related to that. One of the reasons why um, I personally find your work so interesting is because uh, you're you're one of the few people I've noticed based in Texas that um, can do the younger versions of male characters when most of them are women. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sometimes, well, and, and it, it probably just depends on what the vision of the director is, too, because I have played like I've played young Austin Tyndall before in, in a couple of shows. I've played the young versions of other guys, but then like I'll do the show myself and then they'll get somebody to play. They'll get a, a female actress to, to play the young me or something like that. I think I've played young me in a couple of things. Like I did young Seiya in the classic dub of Saint Seiya. Yeah. They had somebody else do young him in the, in the CGI reboot. But um, I, 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 and I, I'm not, a full-time director or anything like that there might be just some like personal reason that they like to differentiate from like when they're really young to versus how they sound when they're more mature um but i yeah like you said i've i've definitely done my handful of like the young versions of other people's characters well at least from what i've noticed it seems like the and i i interviewed her a while ago too it seems like the in terms of sentai dubs that like the queen of doing young versions is a ryan ryan uh, reynolds oh so she uh ryan um i've actually not 
met them that much. I've 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 done um what was I gonna say? I, I did Franks with them and I did uh I did a a uh a commentary, that's the word I'm looking for, with, with them for the for the release of Darling and the Franks. I didn't know that they did much Sentai stuff. I thought they mostly did Funimation stuff, but I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to this is a I would guess maybe that this uh this has to be maybe definitely one of or if not the most like emotionally broken character you played as uh, in Bonnie Toss. Mm-hmm. That one was a lot of fun. Um, I remember uh, whenever I got the I, I got the audition for original Vanitas, and I was like, oh, I I could see myself as maybe this guy, but then like I I could see like so many other people, and I was so glad that my friend Zeno got it. Um, and whenever uh, Dave uh, Dave Wald finally called me in to to record for Mikhail, he was like, I just thought that you guys sound real great as brothers, and so I was like, yes, I love it. Um, and that one was a lot of fun to work on too, as well. Uh, he was he was kind of an emotional stretch as well because um, even though he does have a young version of himself that's played by uh, an, an actress, whenever he transitions into like his older form, when I start to voice him, he still retains kind of that childlike, right? Like in in a sense, but at the same time, just kind of like petulance. He he very much wants what he wants, and he's very upset when he doesn't get it. And and it was very fun to be able to stretch that emotional muscle because I don't like I said I play young versions of other people's characters sometimes, but in anime, a lot of young kids tend to act a lot more maturely than real kids do. Mm -hmm. And so it was uh, really fun to take the direction from David Wald when, whenever he'd be like throwing a fit or something, he's like, I just want, I just really want more of that. Like three year old kid who wants this toy that he wants, but his mom won't buy it for it. Like he's very, like very realistically childlike in that re in that regard. So it was a lot of fun to be able to play in that uh, direction as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> well, I can, I can personally say too, that you, that's, that's one of the best like English voice acting performances I've ever heard. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank yeah. you so much. Was that, um, with how much is going on with all the emotional facets of him, could you, what could you relate to Mikhail about at all? I uh, relate to him. Honestly, um, and this might also be partially why it was such a, 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 a workout for my emotional range. Uh, I was honest. I was never that kid. Honestly, yeah. I was always the kind of kid who tried to be good and and follow the rules and everything like that. So I I don't know that I I personally have any direct relation to him other than maybe, uh, maybe the fact that he wanted to keep his like family together, his family unit, and that's the main thing that he wanted was that he wanted him and his brother and and his father to uh to be together and and have a, a happy family unit. Uh, instead of just being all alone by himself, uh, and so I, I can probably relate a bit most mostly to that. How he how he goes about it, uh, I, I'm I, I don't really find myself relating to too much, but uh, yeah. that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is um, I'm sure obvious too, but do you, do you tend to consume a lot of the stuff that you're into, or? Um, so I tend to watch a, uh, a handful of things that I'm involved in. If I'm, if I play a bit more of like a major role in something, I do want to like check it out and see how everything turned out. So I did watch the episodes of Vanitas that I was a part of. Um, but whenever, whenever I'm just kind of like extra voices or some side characters or something like that, I, it, it's, it's, you do so much different work that it's, it's hard to keep up with everything and where everything's coming out at what time and everything. So like sometimes, um, I'm a little bit late to announce some characters because I didn't realize that they'd already been uh, released or something like that. But usually, usually if I'm playing a major role in a show, um, I try to at least check out uh, a bit of it. If I'm the main character of a show, I, I usually watch the whole thing. Uh, not always. Like, uh, for example, Saya, that was 100 and something episodes. I never had time to watch all of them. Um, but I, I, I watched a, a decent chunk of them. Um, so yeah, I, I, it just depends on the type of show and, and how much uh, the character that I play is involved in it. Um, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. One other more dark, dramatic show that you have a central role in that I also like a lot is uh, Devil's Line. Devil's Line. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he, I, I, what was his <laughs> name again? I'm terrible with my names. Yo, Yoshi. Yo, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Uh, he was one that was funny to be able to play because there's a scene where uh, I'm like trying to figure out something. I'm like hacking the computer or something, and my friend Joe's character just yells at him. He's like, "Hey, get it done faster!" or something like that. And it was it was funny because my friend Joe is always giving me a hard time, and it was funny to me that he gave me a hard time in the show as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Devil's Line, that one that one was, I think, one of the first uh, dub casts that we did here in Houston as well. Um, and so that was fun, because that was, I think, before I had ever gone up to Dallas for anything, if not, or, or it might have been just after doing uh, Frank's. I can't remember. Again, timelines get mixed up in my brain sometimes. But uh, it was it was neat to see us start to do the the weekly like as they were coming out in Japan thing here in Houston as well, mm -hmm. um, since Dallas had been doing it for so long at that point. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and this is a I mean it does have a lot of serious moments, um, some beautiful grounded stuff, and waiting in the summer. Waiting in the summer, yes, I loved working on that one. I mean, I'm happy that they waited until I was working there uh, because <laughs> I, I love playing Kaito. Uh, but it, it does, it, it surprised me that they hadn't already dubbed that show because it, it just like visually, it's very beautiful. I feel like the, the character drama is very strong. It definitely seems like the kind of show that uh, 2012, when it came out, it, it came out in 2012. It, it feels definitely like the kind of show that a 2012 or 2013 Sentai would have dubbed back in the day. Yes. So um, it, it, it kind of uh surprised me that it that it was a sub only show originally uh and again happy that they decided later on like hey we'll go ahead and do a dub release of this and and use me for it and it was great i love working on that show um yeah <laughs> i suppose you probably still have a lot of uh, uh affinity with uh takashi takahashi takashi so. takahashi oh yeah <laughs> i was trying to remember which character that was oh yeah uh why the hell are you here teacher that one that one that's what hey that's one of the ones where i got to play the young me as well because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh relatively young already in that show um that's one of those shows that uh we had a fun time recording it, it's not exactly like it's it's another one of those shows that i i wouldn't exactly watch on my own time personally but uh yeah. um but uh no it was we had a fun time working on it in the show uh or in the in the booth in the show I had a fun time working on it in the booth um because you, you, with with shows like that, you just gotta like keep it professional, obviously. But but you you know what you're working on, and you just gotta have a fun time doing it. Because um, otherwise, you're just kind of awkwardly like, okay, we're doing this now, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. Well, you have some you have some like some of the funniest lines I've ever heard in a uh Ao Chan camp study. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one was a lot of fun too, cause I and he's another character. Uh, I I I I'm terrible with names, but I I what Masaki. was it Masaki Masaki yeah Masaki yes he uh he's also another type of character that I don't get to play very much where he's like the 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 best friend character but like the sleazy best friend character. I'm always, I'm usually like if I'm a friend I'm like the innocent like oh hey cool guys type yes. of person, but he was more like. Yeah, I'm confident and I am a sleaze ball, but I love it. And it's it was it was so much fun. Yeah. because uh, again, I never get to play characters like that very often. And I appreciate Shannon for seeing the sleaze ball within to to bring him out for that character. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> also, it sounds like you have a pretty good um sense of humor about being part of like etchy shows and stuff like that. Yeah, and and I don't I don't mind being in those kinds of shows just because it's 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 cartoons, it's anime. I, I don't don't get mad at me. I said cartoons. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's anime. It's all just for fun. I I do understand why some people might have personal hangups about that kind of stuff because I know different people have different personal like morals when it comes to like uh, that type of content. And and I. No, no, no shade against them. It's just that for me, I'm, I'm personally like it's whatever they're paying me to do this, and mm. it's a fun time in the booth with the director and everything. And and while it's while they may not be the types of shows that I tend to watch myself, um, I still have a great time working on them because of just getting to work with the director and the engineer and everything. Because like I said, we always have a great time, uh, in the booth working on this stuff. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about with uh? Uh, so, so, uh so, Sakuraso, Pet Girl. Pet Girl of Sakuraso? That one was fun. Um, so I actually saw that show 
uh, as a QC worker first. So I, for a while, I, I'm not there anymore, but I worked in the quality control department at Sentai for a bit. And that was one of the shows that um, I had to watch the subtitle version first to like make sure that like all the subtitles were right and blah, blah, blah. They, they had mentioned who the cast was of the show for the dub and i was like okay cool 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 i i and i enjoyed the show watching it in sub version so i i thought it was fun uh and the the character drama again was it was pretty solid uh in my opinion um and so i was like oh it'd be neat to be a part of this and and then eventually the director was like hey we're gonna get you in as this like last minute character in the in the last episode or so i was like yes i actually got to be a part of this thing mm -hmm. um which i thought was pretty neat i i liked that one as well and the artwork in that show is very solid too. It's another one of those like, I'm surprised they didn't dub this before because whenever it, I think it was also another 2012 or 2013 yeah. show that, uh, um, that was a sub only release first, and then later did a a, a later dub of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And another another uh, personal thing for me that it was cool to see be part of because I was um familiar with the original and I'm also gay, so it was cool to see be part of it, the I know Kusabi. I know Kusabi. Yes, yeah, that was one. Um, that was one of the first things that I actually. I think it was the. I think it was the first thing I drove up to Dallas to record for. It was with my friends, uh, Brittany Lada and Matt, Sh Matt Shipman were doing that one yep. through their company Coacha Sound, and I got the auditions for them and uh, read for him. And I thought, again, just a fun character that I don't get to play very often, the sleaze ball type. Um, and I guess they thought I did well enough that they, they decided to, to call me up for him. And that one was a lot of fun to work on, um, just because of the type of character I got to play. Um, and I was surprised at, I was surprised at how prominent he was as a character too, honestly. Yeah. Um, cause it was such a short OV. I think it was like three episodes or yeah. was it was three or four episodes. Yeah. And, um, and then I found out whenever I was, went up to record that like my character, I think had the second highest line count behind like the main guy and then everybody else was just like spread out sporadically throughout the show so i was like oh wow i'm like he he's actually pretty uh prominent in the these episodes which was neat for me um but yeah that was that was a great experience uh because again it was my first time getting to go up to dallas to work on it and also getting to work on it with my longtime friends uh matt and Brittany, who mm -hmm. i hadn't worked for professionally up to that point yet we had only like hung out and chat before then um so that was uh, another fun layer to that as well is that the i think that's one of the main um yahweh series or lgbt series you've been part of so far uh it probably i i think so um especially over the past few years it seems and and i'm in full support of this that that most productions uh of yaoi and yuri try to get representation from lgbtq actors in in their uh respective roles um so i haven't done i haven't done quite as many myself but i'd be open to doing them so long as uh it's it's something that the the creative team is okay with being a a, a fully straight guy myself i i'd, I'd try to avoid the, possibly taking away work from somebody who would better represent those types of stories myself uh them themselves my words got mixed up um so so it was it, while it was great to work on i know kusabi i do understand why more shows nowadays are trying to push more for authentic casting when it comes to um lgbtq roles uh if that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> well just i mean if i can tie it back to um like vocally and acting wise with your performance as a M mikhail um i think you could really you could really nail the kind of um you know feminine oh. <laughs> type of character Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and and I've always I've always thought that my voice had a little bit more of like a an androgynous effeminate air. I think as I've gotten older, my voice has sort of naturally uh, matured, and and I do sound a little bit more masculine than I used to when I was younger. But I still think I still think that I can I can pull off those more airy uh, androgynous sounds as well. Uh, mm -hmm. If that makes sense. <laughs> so then I know this was a. LA based up, but it was really cool to see you uh, play the young version of one of the main characters in a Scarlet Nexus. Scar oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, um, as far as I know, because I didn't know too much about the game, but I think I think the uh, the anime was actually still a Dallas dub as well. I know that oh, the right. video game was LA. Yep. Um, and then I don't know if they got. 
I don't know how much of the original cast they got back for the anime version or not. Um, but I, I do remember um, knowing that it was a video game first and then an anime second. And then when they called me in for that, I was like, oh, neat. I heard a lot of positive things about the video game. Um, and I would hope that uh, people have been enjoying the show as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, how did, um, cause uh, isn't uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh property you're part of, isn't that somewhere else? Yeah, so Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh 7s, so I get to play Yuga in that, and that's a huge surprise to me. So the way that that ended up working out is uh, Konami Cross Media is the studio that works on that, and they are based out of New York. Yep. Um, and my friend, again, uh, Matt Shipman, who has worked on Yu-Gi-Oh before, had recommended I take this class uh, with, with one of the people who work on Yu-Gi-Oh and everything like that. And so I took a, an acting class with them. Uh, went through the whole process, and then at the end of it, I was just kind of like, hey, loved working with you. If you have anything coming down the pipeline like that you're auditioning for, I'd love to be able to work on it or, or at least read for you or something. So I just gave them like my demo and my resume and like my past work and everything. And eventually, like I, I think a couple of months later, they were like, hey, uh, just so you know, we're auditioning for Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s, and, and uh, we'd love to hear you try out a bunch of different characters. And so they had me read for yuga luke gavin and a few other people and um i had completely written off getting that show at all because i was like oh, i'm from houston like i know that they're doing remote recording but they're probably going to stick with like mainly new york people just in case they need to go back to in person at some point during production um so it was about a month after i submitted my audition uh, like there was a whole month between submitting and then getting another email that said, okay, we're going to do a callback for Yuga. I was like, yes, that, that's awesome. And, and um, so we did that callback. And then I think maybe a week after that, they were like, okay, we're going to do a second callback. And I was like, okay, cool. Uh, and then a f I think about a month later, I, it had been another like month or so before I heard anything. And I was like, okay, I didn't get it. I, I'm writing this off. Uh, and then they got back to me and they were like, okay, well, what we want to do is we're going to do paid recording sessions for the first couple episodes just to see how the cast all sounds together. And this isn't the official thing yet, but so they, they had us record the first couple episodes without confirming like, okay, you got this person for sure. Um, and then after, I think after we'd finished recording the second episode, we waited a bit until they had everyone together. Um, and then they were like, all right, congrats. It's your character. And I was like freaking out. I was like, Oh wow. But like for that entire, like, three or four month period where I was like unsure where whether I was going to get it I, I kept like leaning more towards like nah they're not going to go with me and so it was like a huge like great surprise by the end of it when I found out like yes it's, it's me some kid from Houston yeah. working on Yu-Gi-Oh which is uh, amazing because Yu-Gi-Oh is one of those childhood properties that I that I always loved growing up and and so now it's exciting to get to be like the main guy of the new series which is great mm -hmm. <laughs> I am I am surprised too that you haven't been part of a Fire Emblem Heroes yet. Fire Emblem, uh, I've actually never played those games, but they I mean they they seem like they'd be a lot of fun to work on. I I'm I'm open to work on anything they'll have. So if you know anybody, let them know. <laughs> well, because I don't I'm not sure if you're aware, but there's um there's a good handful of um Texas based anime people who are in Heroes. Oh, yeah, I I heard about that. Um, I like see a few friends of mine and stuff. Um announcing that they were doing that i think i think um it just it just depends on what studios you're in with right um remotely i've done a handful of games that were based out of la as well through some studios that i have connections with over there as well but i i just don't particularly i i guess haven't uh haven't gotten my foot in the door with some of those other studios that work on say like fire emblem or uh i don't know other other studio or like genshin or something genshin, like that yeah. uh, those types of uh, studios. So I got to do a little bit more of that self-marketing, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fire Emblem is a cup of tea. Have you worked with them? Before? I have not actually. So okay. yeah. Um, I, 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 again, I'd love to work with anybody who will have me. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it is, it was even cooler to see that you were in Honkai Star Rail. Yeah. And that was one of those surprise. Those that was another one of those surprise ones um, where it's it's there's a there's a studio in um ugh. there's a studio in uh la called uh called keywords and i think that i recorded with them for that first and then it kind of moved around to different studios so it's it's at 
a few different studios now, but it, it's it's for the client is MiHoYo, and I was yeah. like, oh, this is like cool. MiHoYo is the people that did Genshin. I wonder if they're moving studios around or stuff like that. Um, but by the time I found out what the project was, I was like, oh, cool. I'm like, I I thought Jepard, uh, my character in that, uh, I thought that he was just gonna be like some NPC that you come across and like he just kind of has a few things to say. But then, like, whenever it was revealed, like, what the game was and all the different characters, and then I started getting a few more, like, sessions where I was talking more and more. I was like, oh, he's, like, a playable character that, like, you interact with pretty heavily. It's like, okay, cool. So, uh, hopefully the the finished version of that game can come out soon, and, and I might see myself playing that a bit. Um, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you can... <laughs> You could tell that the like really pretty uh shonen guy with a huge weapon isn't gonna just be like a of course, of course. No, looking <laughs> back on it now, it's like, oh of course he's gonna be yeah. <laughs> he's gonna be husbando material, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it did it did seem based off the cast list. Was um was Monarch recorded in Texas though? Monarch, yes, yes, yes. So that one is one of the few games i've gotten to do here at sentai actually mm -hmm. um there's a couple of games that we got to do there i think there's monarch which i play subaru in that one as another character another character type i don't get to play very often the, the the maniacal evil kid or whatever <laughs> um and so we did that game and we've also done uh world's end club i think it was called i was in that one very briefly as just some like extra voices here and there um but it's it's very neat to see that we're starting to get a couple of games down here in houston as well so because I, I love working on games uh it's always a lot of fun because i get to i i think i i play more games than i watch anime so it's it's good okay. to be in video games because i like video games <laughs> <laughs> well in terms of a real real uh more uh, recent anime roles um is a as a Yu Izumi another character that's easy for you to relate to yes I really like him uh Yu Izumi from Shikimori is not just a cutie he is just such a good boy he just tries to be a good boyfriend and uh he's very sweet regardless of his uh his uh unfortunate luck where he's always tripping over and messing things up all the time he's just he's a sweet kid and uh and it's another one of those where it's it's not like super dramatic material or anything like that. It's just a nice, wholesome, fun time uh, for anybody to enjoy. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like you as a character as well. You wouldn't, um, at least for me, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily expect that a executioner in her way of life, like, mm. goes the way it does. <laughs> yeah, that's one. So executioner is actually the first show I got to be the ADR writer on. Um oh, okay. And um, and I don't do this very often because I, I know it can come off as tacky from the actor side of things uh, to the director. But I remember writing the first episode and seeing um, uh, Mitsuki, and I was like, I really want to play this kid. <laughs> so I asked the director, I was like, hey, he's not a main character. He, he's like, he's, he's just a small character in the first episode. Uh, and and I, I don't normally ask for stuff like this, but it would, be, would it be okay if I like play this character? And he was like, yeah, I mean, he was like, yeah, I, I was considering you for him already, so don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, just, uh, it, it was, it's one of those things where I, I, I don't like to ask for roles, essentially. Because I know some people will do that, and it can come off as really, like, needy. But um, he had told me before the recording session, he was like, yeah, you and, like, everybody in the office said you should get Bryson for this guy. And I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. Um so in that first episode, I'm like the the fake out main character or something like that, and it, that was a lot of fun. I I really like that show. Yeah. I think it's a really nice show as well. A lot of the action sequences are super well animated, um, and uh, I highly recommend it. I think it's a pretty solid show. Yep. <laughs> Is there much of a story with um playing Reen in the Kakagurui version or the the Sentai version of that book? Um, not too much of a story for that one. It's just um. As far as I knew, that that the home video rights, for whatever reason, they they couldn't get the Netflix dub or something, and so they called in people to to do the Sentai dub for that as well. Um, and uh, Reen, I don't remember being particularly prominent or anything like that. And like, I, I think he just like shows up a few times throughout the season and stuff like that. So it, it it's one of those where um, I, I I tend to. I, I try not to draw too much attention to characters where where it's like, oh, somebody else voiced them first and then we yeah. did a redub and stuff like that as well. And so I I I, I did do work on that show, but I, I 
don't really like talk about it that much, honestly. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, one that's really um, gorgeous in different aspects that I don't really ever see you talk about is uh, Sud Sudene. Sudene, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just a, a, a result of just what I'm used to people talking to me about, yeah. wanting to talk to me about. Yeah. Uh, but Sudene is another really great, beautiful show. It's a sports, an for anybody watching who hasn't seen it, it's a sports anime about Kudo, which is like Japanese archery. Right. Um, and it's by Kill Annie. And they have a movie coming out this year. Hopefully we get to dub that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope we get to dub that. Um, but it's just a, a nice, like, slice of life sports anime about uh, Minato, who gets anxiety. He's really good at Kudo, but, like, just one day he, he just starts getting, like, severe anxiety. Like, it's called Target Panic, where, where he, he, he feels this intense pressure to do so well that it actually ends up, like, counteracting and making him perform even worse and everything um and it's a, it's a really good show and and then one of my favorite things about that show is also again getting to work with my friend joe daniels who plays uh masaki in that show and he just plays this sort of like mentor character for me because he's his character had also struggled with the same anxiety when he was younger and he was able to get over it or at least cope with it by uh his own methods and and i don't want to spoil stuff so i'll just Leave it at that. It's it's a great show. You guys should definitely check it out if if you haven't seen it before. Mm -hmm. I do also think, I mean, it's kind of on the opposite end of um, I don't know, like what it is in comparison. But I think Skate Leading Stars is pretty fun too. Yeah, and that one is interesting for me. I I'm not entirely familiar uh with like the story of Skate Leading Stars personally. I just thought that one was a lot of fun to work on because the character I play is uh, one of the two twins and most, and pretty much all of their dialogue is <laughs> really quiet. <laughs> and they were like, they gave us lines in the script to say, but the direction was to say them in such a mumbly whispery way that you shouldn't be able to really understand what they're saying. Yeah. And so that was, that was a lot of fun to, to be able to do. Yeah. I know it's kind of um, older at this point, but another more underrated one is uh, Anonymous Noise. Yeah, that one was great. I loved that one. The only thing that I... And, and this is a frustration of the director as well, is that, like, it just doesn't... The ending is so, like, disappointing because it's, like, one of those where it's like, oh, well, the story continues in the manga, basically. Yeah. And then um, I don't know too much about where it goes in the manga, but I hear that people are a little bit frustrated with how it goes in the manga as well. But like, I feel like the ride of the show was a lot of fun. A lot of the dramatic moments were very solid. Um, and the, the character interactions were really mm -hmm. nice, I think. Um, so I, I, I really enjoyed that show. It was a lot of fun to work on. Have you, since, since the pandemic as well, have you had the opportunity to audition for many um, LA-based shows? Um, I've auditioned for a couple, but not too many. It's another one of those things where I, I just don't have as many connections to studios in LA okay. as say Dallas or Houston. Um, and then I guess now New York is something, it's one of those, I, I just, a, a lot of people, there, there's some actors that are really good about like, uh, promoting themselves to different studios and just yes. sending cold emails and stuff like that. And that, that seems to get results. I just tend to be lazy about that kind of stuff myself. Because I also don't want to come off as too overbearing, like, yes, use me in your stuff. And uh, there's like a balance to be found that, I, that I'm still trying to find. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, did, was the way that you ended up in Cookie Run was already knowing Amber? Uh, actually, so Cookie Run was recorded with that studio that I just happened to get in with for mobile games. It's also the same studio that I recorded, uh, Pokemon Unite through, which was, okay. uh, keywords. And they, uh, the, the casting director there was just like, hey, I got the auditions for Cookie Run. And so I auditioned for him just like everybody else. And, uh, I ended up getting him. So it just kind of lucked out that I didn't even know that's the studio that worked on Cookie Run um and uh they just sent it my way i auditioned and then I, I i booked it and everything um but i i i guess by extension though actually it, it probably was because i knew amber because the reason i was able to get in with that studio at all was because amber had been directing stuff for them and she recommended me to them yeah. um and sent them my demo and everything like that so i guess by by some far extension i i, I am in cookie run because i know amber <laughs> <laughs> So what are some of the, uh, well, there might not be, but is there anything that's uh, upcoming that you're part of you can safely talk about? Upcoming that I can talk about? Uh, 
Well, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens is currently airing on Disney XD, and that's an exciting one that's coming up. Well, it is out and ongoing. Um, and I'm trying to think of something else. Uh, what have I been recording lately? I, I I can't think of anything that I can talk about, honestly. Uh, Shiki Morty is not just a cutie. is still uh, airing as well. That's on Crunchyroll. Um, and, yeah, I would say just uh, keep an eye out on my Twitter and stuff. I tend to announce things pretty as pretty much as soon as I'm able to talk about them. I, I'm the kind of person that likes to, to get the word out. Uh, so, yeah. My final question, then, is always asking, uh, what do you want your legacy to be? My legacy? Oh, my goodness. Um, I want to be... Dang, that's a <laughs> that's an intense question. I don't know. I guess I just want to be known for playing characters that relate to people, that people relate to, and and performing them in a way that is uh, impactful is the best mm. way to put it. Yeah, I guess that that if that makes sense, okay, yeah. <laughs> that, that's probably if I if I keep rambling more, it's just going to start sounding rambly and and whatever. But yeah, I think <laughs> just being having having played characters that impacted fans of these shows and everything like that and being remembered well um for for that i guess mm -hmm. yeah well you're you're uh i mean just based off our first interaction on cameo i mean you're one of the sweetest people <laughs> oh thank you i appreciate it yeah <laughs> well so, uh it was it was nice talking to you is is this uh are, is that all your questions or did you have anything yeah. else that you wanted to... yeah okay yeah, yeah Sounds thanks. good and if anybody watching this wants like i said wants to to see any more updates i'm on twitter just at bogus bryson um i do stream on twitch and stuff and and youtube as well uh i do youtube videos when i feel like it uh, i'm trying to get better about that as well that's stuff that's upcoming is is okay uh, what i've got upcoming is is trying to do streams and youtube videos more often so yeah <laughs> <laughs> well have a good rest of your day then thank you you too bye bye, -bye.